Welcome to Tactic Apps. In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how to create a custom rounded button in WPF. Now, if you may have noticed, the default button in WPF doesn't have any property that allows us to adjust the corner radius. So we are going to be achieving that in today's tutorial. I already have a project set up here and in my project I added a file called colors.txt and this file contains a number of color codes that we are going to be using in today's tutorial. So I'll go to my project and I'll add in a custom control. So under the WPF tab, I'll click custom control and just type in rounded button. Our custom control class has been added as well as a folder that contains a resource dictionary. And within this resource dictionary is a style that defines the visual appearance of our control. I'll just navigate to the control class and I'll get rid of this summary. Now one thing to note is that our rounded button class inherits from the control class. I'll change that to the button base class. I'll just go ahead and add in the appropriate namespace. The reason why you would have to inherit from the button base class is because the button base class inherits from the content control class. This allows us to render different types of content within our control. For example, we could render a text or we could render an image or maybe an ellipse. That's because we inherit from the button base class which inherits from the content control class. Okay, I'll go back to my class here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a dependency property. And this dependency property will be of the type corner radius and I'm going to give it a name corner. So within the register method, we need to change the owner class to the round button class here. That's because the owner of this property is the rounded button class. And here we have property metadata. We just can't leave a zero here. What this means is the default value of this property. Now we can't leave a zero here because zero is of the type integer and this property is of the type corner radius so we need to change that zero. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just create a new instance of the corner radius type and give it a value of zero. Therefore this means the default value of this property will be of the type corner radius and that value will be set to zero. Now the reason I chose the corner radius type is the corner radius type allows us to set each individual's corner's radius different from the other. Now you can see here within the corner radius class it has four properties of the type double. Bottom left, bottom right, top left and top right. Okay, I'm going to navigate to the generic file which is our resource dictionary that contains the style and just copy this style and go to the main window. And I'm going to add a resource section within the window. Window.resources and I'm going to paste in the style. Now before I can do anything I need to build the solution. That's because whenever we create custom controls and we want to view them within the design view we need to have them built otherwise it would cause some errors.
all right the build was successful so what I'll do I'll go to my style and select the border and under the borders properties under the appearance tab we can see there's a property of the type corner radius and you can see it has an array of values zero for each I'll just go ahead and click this square here and I'll create a template binding now you can see there's a suggestion corner here I'll just click on that what has happened is it has now created a binding to our property here corner and that's the property that we created in the rounded button class so what I'll do is within our border I'm going to add in a content presenter and I'll set this content presenters content to the content of our rounded button class here so I'll do the same thing I'll create a data binding which is a template binding and I'll choose the type content and I'll set the horizontal alignment to center and the vertical alignment to center as well so what's happening here is we have a border and we have a content presenter so the content presenters content is being bound to the content property of our rounded button class so whatever is the content of this rounded button class that content will be presented by the content presenter and that content can be text could be an image could be an ellipse or whatever type you would want to present as your content and we set the horizontal alignment to center as well as the vertical alignment to center so I'm going to go ahead and build the solution again alright the solution was built successfully I'm going to go ahead and add in our control I'll just type in rounded button and there it comes so apparently it's the same size as the grid so I'll just resize it and I'll place it in the center now we can't see anything and that's because the background color is not set and it's apparently just transparent so I'll set the background color I'll navigate to the color dot txt file and get color from there and I'll paste it now we can see there's a color now in our rounded button class we created a dependency property of the type corner here so we can set the value of this property here I'll just go ahead and type in corner and I'll set the property to 12 now we can see that the visual appearance of our custom control has now changed so I'll just go ahead and set it to 5 now one other thing is that if we put in an array I'll go for 8800 zero, zero. we'll see that each individual corner will have its own radius and it will give you that kind of appearance I'll just go back and set it to 5 again so what's happening here in our style we have a border and this border has a property corner radius that is bound to the property that we created earlier on corner so whenever we change this it actually changes the border radius here okay what I'll do is I'll change the content and I'll just give it a simple text and we can see the text appears here and I'll change the foreground to white 
for some contrast okay so we can see that our custom control is taking up shape what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an effect which is the hover effect whenever the mouse goes over the control I would want the background color to change so within our style here in the control template I'll just go ahead and add in a trigger so control templates on dot triggers and I'll add in a trigger and this trigger would target a property type of is mouse over and the value will be set to true so I'm adding a trigger that whenever the mouse is over our control whenever that is true something should happen there so I'm going to add in a setter now before I do that I'm going to give this border a name so that I can access it easily within our setter so I'm going to give it a name background copy that so our setter will target the type our setter will target the property type background because we want the background color to change so that's the type we need to target the property and the target name will be background now don't confuse this the target name simply means the name of this border here and I gave it a name background which apparently is the same as the property we are targeting but that doesn't do anything so I'll give it a value so I'll give it a color so I'll go back to the colors.txt file and I'll get the hovered background which is just a lighter shade of blue and I'll add it there so what's happening is that whenever the mouse is over the background property of this border here is set to a lighter shade of blue and when the mouse is out it goes back to the default value that is set here now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy paste our control here now in the second control I'm going to change the background color to white so I'm just going to cut this out and I'm also going to give it a border thickness of 1 and set the border brush to blue and I'll set the foreground color to blue as well so now we have two different styles here one's a solid and one's outlined okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and test alright the application was built successful so I'll just go ahead and try to hover over the control and we can see its behavior I'll try on the second one and we can see okay I'll just go ahead and close this now one thing to note is that here in our style under the trigger we do not have to predefine this color the best practice is to go to the custom control class and create a dependency property of the type brush and bind that property to the styles here in our hover effect the reason for that is when you create an instance of your control you want it to have individual behaviors we do not want it to share the same hover color because at times you want to style it different 
So the best practice would be to create a property and then bind it here so that whenever we tweak that property, the color changes as well. Now, once this is done, go ahead and cut out the style. And go to your resource dictionary and replace the old one with the updated one. Now, once this is done, what you can do is you can now build a library class so that you can use your custom controls in other projects. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.